sunshine. What a great day for hiking. Come on, Sam, wake up. Mm, go away. Get ready, get up. Unless you want me to tickle you. Let's go hiking together. Let's get out and make a difference. No, I just want to watch the video on my iPad. What? Come on. We can't always just focus on ourselves. Let's get out there. There's so many things to see and so many things to do. No, thank you. I just want to play with my Switch. No way, Sam. We need to get out of our comfort zone and get out into the world. All right, let's go. Awesome. Good job, Sam. Now let's get out there and have a good hike together. Kids, it is so easy to just always focus on ourselves with what we want to do. In fact, that's exactly what many Christians choose in their spiritual lives. They rather go to church for a few hours on Sunday and then just go back to doing what they want to do and keep their faith at home during the week. But God doesn't want us to stay put and hide our faith. He needs us to get involved. Jesus expects his disciples to take on the work he began. So let's get out there to continue his work by serving others. is a great way to experience the outdoors, to get away from your usual routines, and also to get some good exercise. But when you go hiking, you always need to be prepared with the things you need. So here are a few tips for when you go hiking. One, tell someone where you're going and when you're expected to be back. It's a really good practice and will give you a peace of mind knowing that your loved ones know where you are. Two, make sure that you or your hiking group knows the hiking plan to know the route and distance, what the weather will be like, and also what animals inhabit the hiking area so that you can plan your hike accordingly. Three, make sure that you have all your essential items for your hike. For example, a map, a GPS device, water, a first aid kit, and etc. And just like if we were to go out and serve Jesus and others, we need to be prepared just like if we were going on a hiking trip. We want to pray to God, telling Him what we want to do to serve others that day, and ask Him that He will be with us. We need to have a plan. Do we share God's love by helping others with their need, inviting them to church, or intend to share the gospel that day. Planning helps us to be prepared and ready. We need to have our essential items. Should we bring the Bible with us? Or should we bring our gospel track so that we can explain the gospel clearly with others? So whether you're going hiking or serving others, remember these important tips. And that's it for today's Camping Fun Fact. Hey kids, welcome back to Children Worship. We hope you are having a great summer so far. So today, we're continuing with our Happy Camper Sermon Series with today's title, Let's Go Hiking Together. Hiking? Where will we be going for a hike? Well, Jesus wanted to go out and serve others. That is what he taught his disciples to do. So it is our responsibility to get out there to do some good. And today, we have got a great idea of how we can do that together. Oh, what is it? What is it? Did you know that millions of children in America are living in poverty and face food insecurity? Meaning they simply don't have enough to eat. So what can we do about it? We want you kids and your families to get involved, to work together to provide for some of these families in need. 
So we're gonna work through a nonprofit organization named Children's Hunger Fund, and we're gonna participate in their project food packs. And here's what this project is all about. When you think about poverty in America, the reality of it is, it's happening right next door, right down the street, right around the corner, right in the classroom. Poverty in America is two working adults in a home, generally with two plus children, but with not enough money to make ends meet. Poverty in America is a home where we have a roof over our head, but we have no electricity. Poverty takes on so many different forms in America that is unseen. Right now, over 14 million children are living in poverty, right here in the U.S. Children are more likely to face food insecurity than any other group in America. When I think about Mercy Ministry, I think about helping the least of these. And what's so fun about the food pack is its impact. Those food packs are actually going to go into a house with a person taking it to them and building a relationship. You can make a difference. You can provide food for a hungry child in the U.S. with Project Food Pack. When you fill a food pack, you are providing a way to meet people at their point of need. Food packs are delivered to families by pastors and volunteers from a local church. This opens the door to relationship and sharing the life-changing message of the gospel. Project Food Pack. You can deliver hope. Wow! I can't imagine what these families are going through right now. We should really step up and help them out. Yeah, so this is a good opportunity for us to go out and do some good for Jesus. So this coming week, I'll be emailing your parents with instruction on how we can work together to bring meals to these needy children. Awesome! Sounds like a plan! And with that, let's start our worship. Today we have James to do the opening prayer for us. Take it away, James! Let's bow our heads and pray. Dear God, let us go outside to serve other people and to serve you. Most importantly, you, because you are the one and only God. Let us focus on the worship videos because it helps us learn about you. And we also pray that the coronavirus will stop very quickly because we wear a lot of things like the mask and we, it sometimes might feel uncomfortable. So please make the coronavirus stop so we don't have to wear the mask. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to CBMC Kids Sunday Worship. Jesus wants us to go out and serve others. It sounds pretty hard, but there's some ways that it's pretty easy for us to do. For example, just going out and telling people about the good news. Let's sing about it.
But the second song that we're going to sing, we need to all stand up and we need to dance together and do it together. Put your right hand in, you put your right hand out. Put your right hand in and you shake it all about. You give your heart to Jesus and you turn yourself around. That's what it's all about. Put your left hand in, you put your left hand out. Put your left hand in and you shake it all about. You give your heart to Jesus and you turn yourself around. That's what it's all about. Give your heart to Jesus. Give your heart to Jesus. Give your heart to Jesus. And that's what it's all about. Put your right foot in, you put your right foot out You put your right foot in and you shake it all about You give your heart to Jesus and you turn yourself around That's what it's all about You put your left foot in, your left foot out You put your left foot in and you shake it all about You give your heart to Jesus and you turn yourself around That's what it's all about Give your heart to Jesus Give your heart to Jesus Give your heart to Jesus And that's what it's all about You put your head in, you put your head out You put your head in and you shake it all about You give your heart to Jesus and you turn yourself around That's what it's all about you put your whole self in, you put your whole self out You put your whole self in and you shake it all about You give your heart to Jesus and you turn yourself around That's what it's all about Give your heart to Jesus Give your heart to Jesus Give your heart to Jesus, your heart to Jesus. And that's what it's all Teacher King is going to teach us next week's sermon. Let's go. Hello, boys and girls. Teacher King here. Teacher King is very excited to share God's word with you today. So last week, Teacher Ricky shared about going camping together. That in order for us to follow Jesus, we have to make sacrifices. Well, today, we're going to talk about hiking for sermon number three. No trip into the woods is complete without a little exploration. For as long as people have been going into the woods, people have been taking hikes. If you and your family have ever been camping or lived in Los Angeles, chances are you've been hiking. Teacher King and our family has enjoyed hiking. We don't go all the time, but we've enjoyed the privilege of living in Los Angeles with wonderful weather, green trees, mountains, ocean. We even camped in other areas when we we're visiting other places as well, such as Seattle, Hawaii, and even Japan. Some prefer the relative ease and safety of trials that are well-marked paths. Many of our national parks and state parks have beautiful hiking trails that can lead to some breathtaking sights, from mountain views all the way to hidden waterfalls. Some prefer to take hikes on trails with horseback. They ride like the old American explorers down the trails and experience the beauty and nature on the back of a horse, kind of like Grand Canyon. Still others craving real adventure leave the horse trails and walking paths and explore the deep woods. This can be a little more dangerous, especially in places filled with poison ivy, wildlife, but it's an adventure that you'll never forget. Whatever path people take, it's a much more exciting and thrilling way to spend the time than sitting inside and looking out a window or on your tablets all the time. But that's exactly what many Christians choose in their spiritual lives. They would rather go to church, sit, and keep their faith at home during the week, kind of hidden not adventurous. 
they're missing out on the adventures they could have serving Jesus. God doesn't want us to hide our faith. He wants us to get involved. Early on in his ministry, Jesus began preparing his own disciples to take on the work that he began, work he expects us to continue. And we see a good example of this in Luke 10, 1 through 17, when Jesus sends the 72. Let's take a look. Jesus appointed 72 followers. He sent them out two by two ahead of him. They went to every town and place where he was about to go. He told them, the harvest is huge, but the workers are few. So ask the Lord of the harvest to send out workers into his harvest field. Go, I am sending you out like lambs among wolves. Do not take a purse or bag or sandals, and don't greet anyone on the road. When you enter a house, first say, May this house be blessed with peace. If someone there works to bring peace, your blessing of peace will rest on them. If not, it will return to you. When you enter a town and are welcomed, eat what is given to you. Heal the sick people who are there. Tell them, God's kingdom has come near to you. Whoever listens to you, listens to me. Whoever does not accept you, does not accept me. But whoever does not accept me, does not accept the ones who sent me. The 72 returned with joy. They said, Lord, even the demons obey us when we speak in your name. Thank you, John John. Now for the main idea. Jesus didn't deceive his followers. He told them that they had to go and he told them it would be challenging, saying they would be like lambs among wolves. Nonetheless, Jesus asked them to go and spread the good news that he had given them. The people returned to Jesus amazed. They shared the good news just as Jesus asked them and they found all that the power of the Holy Spirit was with them throughout everywhere that they went and was really theirs to use. Even the demons submit to us in your name, they said. Jesus sent the 72 out to show them that they could continue his work when he was gone. He also did it to show us that we could do the same. Are you ready? Remember earlier in the video, Teacher Dixon and John John talked about the Children Hunger Fund project, Project Pack? Well, that is an awesome way to get out there and do some good to share God's love by providing meals to those in need. So we are looking forward to get as many families involved as possible, and we're gonna do this mission together. In conclusion, the 72 learn three things from their first mission experience. First, they learned that Jesus needed their help. The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few, he says. Jesus wants his disciples to travel through the whole earth sharing the good news wherever they go. Our church is here to help those who believe in Jesus to grow and learn more about Him. But it was never intended to be our hiding place. You see, the church should be a place where we get fed and nourished. But the real work happens outside, when we're out in the field, outside of the church. Jesus wants us to go out into the community and the whole world sharing the good news in words and actions. We can tell people about Jesus, but we can also serve people, meeting their needs and being Jesus' hand and feet. Many times it is our actions, not our words, that convince people that Jesus really loves them. They also learn to go in peace. Jesus told them to stay where they were invited and to share the good news with people willing to listen. God has given us free will, and Jesus said, if someone rejected the word, we are to move on. It's tempting to get into argument with people, but arguments can lead to hateful words and actions. Sharing the gospel requires us to speak the truth in love. Be at peace with everyone and share the good news with those who welcome it. The last thing they learned was that Jesus would give them power. 
is proof that when we serve Jesus, He gives us power to stand up to evil and to show people that God is one true God. So kids, we can do this together. Just like the 72 that Jesus sent out. Let's get out there and make a difference. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you Lord for this lesson as you have shared with us about the 72 that you sent out. Lord, I pray that we would not be comfortable and be content and satisfied in just attending church. I pray that the, we understand that the real work happens outside of the church and that we're willing to serve and love others and actually do things that will really help other people's lives so that they can see your love for them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Tisha King, for that great sermon. So kids, remember to always be ready to go out and do some good for Jesus. And now's our memory verse time. Today we have Micah to do our two memory verses. Go for it, Micah. Let's read today's memory verses. Memory verse number one. And do not forget to do good and to share with others. For with such sacrifices, God is pleased. Hebrews 13, 16. Memory verse number two. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few, as the Lord of the harvest. Therefore, to send out workers into the harvest field. Matthew 9, 37-38 Let us do our best to memorize God's words in our heart. And now Segment number one, go out and serve others. Today, we learned about how Jesus wants us to go out and serve others. So we thought it'd be great to share a couple of recent news stories of how people go out of their way to helping others. First story, police officers buy new refrigerator, groceries for elderly women in need. In Texas, a Seguin police officer, Dustin Kincaid, visited a home after receiving a call to check on an elderly woman. He called the woman and listened to some of her troubles. Yeah! The woman shared with the officer that her refrigerator went out and she does not have the money to fix it or even the ability to buy food. Yeah! So, Officer Kincaid decided to go beyond his duty and help out this woman. He called his police department who together rose to the challenge. Within that week, they raised enough money to purchase a new refrigerator for this woman and gave her money to buy her some groceries. How about that? Wow, that is so kind! Yeah! Officer Kincaid plans to keep in touch with, a wo with, with this woman and visit her at least once a week. What a wonderful example for us to learn to love and serve others. Yeah! Alright, next story. Last week in the state of Missouri, Governor Mike Parson officially signed off and created the Random Acts of Kindness Day. This new bill, SB 72, was signed into law to designate August 31st as a day in Missouri where everyone is encouraged to go out and do something nice for a stranger or someone already in their life. So, this new law is created to help people to remember that one small act of kindness has the power to change the entire course of a person's life and the potential to impact countless others as random acts of kindness are paid for. What an awesome way to encourage the people of Missouri to love one another. But kids, even though we are not in Missouri, the good thing is there is nothing to stop us from doing acts of kindness today or any day. Yeah. Jesus wants us to get out there and do some good. So kids, let's be good and do some good for others. Now, let's go off to our next segment. Number two, exercise time. Hi guys, I'm Coach Elias. And I'm Coach Matthew. And today, we're gonna do exercise time. So first, we're gonna do push-ups. We're gonna do five of these, okay? Ready, go. One, 
Alright guys, now we're going to do side planks and we're going to hold each side for 7 seconds, okay? Ready, go. 1, One two, three, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, the other side. 1, 2, two three, 4, four five, six, seven. Now we're gonna do bus speed. We're gonna do this for 15 seconds, okay? Ready, go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Alright guys, now the last thing we're gonna do is bridge lift. So how you do bridge lift is you hold this position like this and we're gonna do it for 10 seconds, okay? Ready, go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Great job guys. Make sure to get plenty of water to hydrate. And we'll see you guys next week. Bye. What's up segment number three? Mystery question time. Are you ready? And here are the questions. Number one, fill in the blanks. From today's lesson, we learned that Jesus wants us to, what are these two words? And what is this word? Number two, in the Bible, Luke chapter 10, verse one to 17, NIV, Jesus said, the harvest is, what is this word? But the workers are, what is this word? Number three, multiple choice. Choose the best answer. In today's Bible story, how many followers did Jesus send out ahead of him to serve others? A, 12, B, 100, C, 72, or D, infinity. Number four, multiple choice. Choose the best answer. In today's Bible story, what were the three things that we learned from the conclusion of today's lesson. A. Jesus needs our help to go serve others. B. As we go serve, we are to go in peace. C. Jesus will give us power to serve him. Or D. All of the above. Bonus questions. Please provide a short answer for these questions. Number five. From our What's Up segment number two, what did the police officer do to help the poor elderly woman? Number six, what is the name of the project that we will be doing to help send food to the children in need? Each mystery question is worth five points each. Once you have all of them written down, then you'll email them to the following email address. cbmckids at cbmcla Dot org. We will keep track of your points and will provide you with opportunities to trade in your points for rewards about every six weeks. And if this is your first time participating, please email us and we'll provide you with more information. And that's it for today's What's Up segment. And now's our craft time. Today we have Miss Craft to teach us another awesome craft for us. All right, let's do it. Boys and girls, how are you guys doing this week? Well, we are continuing Happy Camper theme this week, so our craft will related to that. So are you ready to do something cool and awesome? This week's craft, it's C. We are going to um, make out a campground and a hiking, uh, a 3D hiking uh, paper craft. See that? It can stand by itself. And it has, um, it could fold it and it has all the, you know, hiking elements. And I hope this craft can remind you guys that we have to um, go out of our comfort zone and willing to hike and go places that God asked us to go. Therefore, um, let's start. 
So basically, it's very easy. You need a piece. First of all, you need a piece of green paper. So um, it could be letter size. It could be A4 size. So first of all, we are going to fold a little, do a little fan for like, you fold it and then you flip it around. Then you fold it like this, okay? Just be careful and make sure all of the folds are same, has the same width, okay? And make sure um, they um, the fold is uh, nice and neat, okay? After you make the fold, we're going to fold this whole piece in half. Okay. Be sure you leave out a um, bun whole bunch of space on the top, okay, on the top area. And then get your glue sticks out. We are going to tape um, these two pieces, the left and right, together. Be generous with the glue. And we're going to tape this together. After you tape them together, it'll look like a fan, like a, a fan here. Okay. There we go, after you taping that together. So we're gonna have the base right here. Then you're gonna get out a white piece of paper or light blue as your background. So we're gonna measure this, okay? On the bottom, we're gonna measure this and then make a full line along with the same size, all right, and the full line along with this. Then we're gonna get out a ruler or a pair of scissors and we're gonna cut off the top. All right, now that you cut this out, we are going to tape this bottom to the white, okay? Once again, be generous with the glue and we're gonna tape the left side first, then the right side. Just tape one side first. Okay. There you go. Tape one side first. All right. Then we put glue on the other side. After gluing these two sides together, we are now gonna get our a black piece of paper and we're gonna draw a bunch of um, lines that representing the heel and then we're gonna cut the heel out okay and you're welcome to use marker or you're welcome to use um, ballpoint pen whatever that's easier we're gonna cut that out are the, the heel and then afterwards we're gonna get our piece of white paper we're gonna cut out a little um, a little area that looks like um, the snows the snow uh, on top of the hill tape it on top of here okay there you go we now we put the, um, the white snow on top then we're gonna tape this here okay tape it here and before we do that we're gonna need to make a little line all right we're gonna tape once again we're gonna tape um, the left hip first. 
Once again, be generous with the glue. Make sure it taped well on the paper. After we tape the hill on top, we're gonna get out um, two pieces of blue paper to cut the cloud shape, and then um, just cut a, a orange paper as the, the sun. So let's tape those on. I'm gonna put the sun on the top. Let's make this hiking trip 3D has a nice weather, has a nice weather, okay? Weather is very important. Oh, we have the sun. And then we put some um, clouds on top of the sky to make it look um, nicer. And we put clouds here. There we go. All right, now we're gonna get out a piece of paper which is we are going to um, cut a, uh, a piece of land in the middle between the grass area, like piece of uh, land, the grass area and the uh, and the uh, hillside area. There we go. And then we're gonna tape that in. All right, there we go. After we do the middle land and the hill and the grass area, now we're gonna make a tree. We're gonna make little stems like this, and then we're gonna get out a piece of green paper, and we're gonna cut out a, sh a tree shape. A tree shape. Just like an irregular tree, it doesn't have to be perfect. There we go. Okay, and then we are going to um, tape the tree on the stamps. All right. After you make um, a bunch of trees, and then we're gonna make the fruit from the tree. First of all, you get out a piece of paper. It could be any fruit color. Then we're gonna fold it a few times so that we are going to cut out from those okay and then we're gonna fold probably to this small and then we're gonna cut the fruit out okay since it's red so um, maybe it'll be like an apple shape all right now we're gonna tape this little piece a fruit on top of the tree we just made. Okay. Just tape, tape them a little bit here, a little bit there. All right, after putting the, the fruit on top of the tree, let's put the tree in. So we're gonna probably put uh, one tree here and one tree here, okay? So we're gonna tape the trees to the grass area the grass ground area. There we go. I'm gonna tape this one to the right side. Here we go. Hope they stand well. There we go. Wow, voila! Isn't it nice, boys and girls? That is our, our craft of today. We a hiking um, area that has nice weather and then a uh, hill and then land and then trees. I hope, I hope you guys all try to make it and they are fun to make and it's not hard it's not that hard and I hope while you're making it it reminds us we are willing to go out and to the com um, to out of our comfort zone to the areas that um, God wants to hike and do something. And I hope that all of you enjoy making this craft. Uh, I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.
Hi, boys and girls. Thank you for worshiping with us today. Let's close our worship time with a word of prayer. Let's bow our head and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for giving us such a wonderful time to worship you today. Through today's message, we learn that you want us to go out and serve others. Because this is our responsibility to go out and serve Jesus, and it is also our responsibility to go out and spread your gospel. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. See you all next week, and have a wonderful week. Bye bye. Ready, go. Two. Three. Wait. <laughs> 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 Just <laughs> <down>. <laughs>